This week in post, a divide and conquer approach to working on your images. Hey everyone, my name is Scott Davenport. Welcome to InPost. Thanks for joining me today. Before I go with today's photo, I want to get your questions about landscape retouching. And this could be anything, you know, whatever you're having the most challenges with, whether it's finding all of the different dust spots and rooting them out to removing a more complicated, distracting element from your photo. Leave a comment below, or you can reach out to me through my website. Let me know what you have the most challenge with when you're retouching your landscapes. Now today's photo, the topic really, what we're going to talk about is uh, like a divide and conquer, uh, finding and isolating your subjects and processing those as individual elements of the scene. And I was working on one of the photos from Kushimoto. I showed you footage from that outing a couple of days ago. And this uh, really lent itself to it. So I have this photo here. This is the finished image. And uh, you know, nice rocks, good color, you know, nice, nice warm and cool tones all here. And really, as I look at this, there are, you know, fundamentally a handful of elements. There are the rocks, there's the little bit of wash here in the center, and then there's the sky. And I thought I'd show you how I processed the rocks and really um, just leveraging work that I do on one rock to the others. So I'm going to move over to this virtual copy I have here. I'm going to see the rocks are going to get a little duller. Right, so they're not as warm. They don't have that uh, that nice inviting orange, you know, end of day feel. And so, how did I process these? I used the radial tool in Lightroom, and let's go ahead and just nominal, not do anything with the sliders yet. So all I'm doing is just nothing at all with the the changes. What I want to do first is isolate my subject. So I'm going to take one of these, drag it over this big rock here. Let's just shape it so that we're going to be covering the whole rock like that. That's pretty good. We'll bias it over there. All right, I'm going to turn on the mask overlay. Notice I have invert selected, so we're covering what's inside. And then I'll use a range mask, luminance, kind of back off on the highlights so the sky is not going to be affected. And, you know, this just becomes, uh, you know, there's no magic settings. It depends on your subject. But I'm really just doing these sliders, adjusting them so that the red is covering this rock. All right, cool. So I've isolated the subject now. Now I can go and start working the sliders. And so for this rock, I want to add a little warmth. Right? And that's looking better already. I probably want to add some more clarity. Have that, those textures and things pop. Perhaps even a little more contrast. And let's see what else I could even go with a little bit of sharpness and a little finishing touch. I can even add a tiny bit of uh, a color tint, like maybe just a very soft, warm orange there. So something like that. That's roughly what I did for the previous photo. Now this is cool. I've taken care of that subject, but I've got two other rocks that I want to deal with. I've got this group here at the back and I've got this group over here. Well, now that I've done all this pre-work, I can right click and duplicate that pin. And now I'll take this pin and I'll drag it over to this rock here. Now I'll turn back on my mask overlay so we can see exactly what this is going to affect. And we'll need to shrink this down some. So we're just working on the rock that we're interested in. But with the range masks already done. And so most of this is good. Uh, it looks like I'm losing a little bit here inside the rock. And so we can either increase and add in a little more of those highlights or sometimes adjusting the smoothness starts to make the, you know, the, the boundary between what's considered in mask and out of mask a little more crisp. And that looks better. Now all my sliders are already set. You know, so now I've got that rock. Wait for Lightroom to catch up here. There we go. I've got that rock. It's got that nice orange cast to it. It's warmer. It's got more detail. And I can repeat this through the scene. So the third one is, you know, copy that pin again and drop it down into the lower right corner. And then at the very end, I'll go back to my original photo. You can see that I've got three pins here, one, two, and three. And that's exactly how I worked through treating those rocks. Now, yes, there were other adjustments that I did to this photo. Similar in nature, though. I adjusted the sky, made that cooler, did the same trick though, using a range mask, limiting the, the effect on the rocks. But this, um, this notion of identifying the subjects that are in your photo and figuring out how do you want to treat one of them 
If you want to have that same treatment on others, duplicate that pin and then just move it around. You maybe have to fine tune the mask a little bit, then you're good to go. And it's really going to speed up your workflow and also let you work on individual elements in your photo and treat them just the way that you want. And that's going to do it for this week's sim post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know somehow. Hitting the like button lets me know you got some value out of it. Share this with your photo club. You got questions, please send them my way. I'd love to hear what's on your mind photographically. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.